Hello, welcome to the stream. My name is Mar. I'm the founder of an animation studio here in Tokyo, in Japan, where it's raining a lot. And hopefully today we'll have fun talking about some, you know, shocks and joys and expectations versus reality. Since I came to Japan eight years ago, heavily influenced by anime and manga, I mean, I created an animation studio because I love the thing. Now, a uh, second part of today would be about bullet trains and road trips. So this is uh, an image for the movie Summer Wars, one of my favorites, at least it's been one of my favorites for a while. This image is from a Shinkansen, which means bullet train, so every time I repeat that, it's the same. My image was that it will feel like, ooh, like you're going super fast, and maybe, I don't know, maybe you feel it in your ears. Uh, that was my expectation. And uh, the reality of it was that, yes, it gets very fast, but there's different types of bullet trains. The fastest they are, the expensive, the more expensive they get. They're more, they're actually basically like what you're seeing, uh, some of like more older or newer models. And some of the good things of these trains that I really like to, like, I really enjoy, it's not just like, they're more comfy, you have your seat usually booked uh, in advance, like you have like, you'll see designated once you get the ticket. Uh, but they have like this uh, place to put like trays for like food, beverage, uh, computer and work there. Um, they also have like a place to hang clothes, place to put like suitcase if anything. They have restrooms. They don't have a person with a little cart going up and down the train selling some pricey beverage and snacks. And usually when I use this type of trains, because I'm on some sort of holiday, vacation or trip. But obviously this is used for people in Japan that are workers, right? So for example, for my husband, it can feel like work going on a bullet train. For me, it always feels like exciting because I'm going somewhere for some sort of fun or for feeling something different, usually to new places. It's also pricey, but... I guess worth the price and I rather bullet trains than taking domestic flights. As far as I know, they're better for the environment, like trains rather than airplanes, as far as I know. Okay, so someone I know is traveling saying on Twitch, we consider taking night bus, but Shinkansen feels like a fun adventure. Okay, I would say it's cheaper. So night buses basically are buses where like you can almost go flat or like very comfortably spend the night while you're traveling quite far from like city A to city B, let's say Tokyo to Kyoto. And it's cheaper than a bullet train, but I feel it's worth getting the bullet train if you can afford it to. And because it's, it's just so much more convenient and you get, you're much more rested to then enjoy your activity. But obviously that's also about preferences. Night buses can be also fun and a different adventure. Uh, I went from Yokohama to Osaka and back using the night bus just because I wanted to save up some money, but oh boy, sleeping was not an option. Yeah. So that's the thing, like you, it may be worth it because then you do more activities there because, because you're saving money because that's the way, or maybe someone else that you're going with one, you're going with wants to try it. But I would say it's a bit better to wait for the for the bullet train in those cases. I would like to finish this stream a bit earlier than usual. We just have one topic left, tatamis and futons. Most likely this is a comical scene when they put them together, but they're not supposed to because they're, well, they're not a couple, I guess. I used to see these traditional rooms uh, in many anime and manga before coming. The tatami was like, so curious, like, will it be soft? Will it be hard? Will I feel the edges? Is it rough? And uh, when I came the first time in Japan, it was summer. And something that the tatami is that it's very, that it got it, it really got into me is the smell. So tatamis are made, I believe, from the rice, uh, the rice plant. Right? Like tied to each other, like very tightly and very organized. And they're always the same size, or, I, or maybe they have a very few basic sizes. So the feeling is harder than I expected it to be in terms of like walking on them, but it's not like wood and it's not like rock, it's not like um, um, tiles either. So it's, it is softer. If you 
feet, if you fall on at the time, it will hurt less than falling onto rocks and like most of Western houses. Something that really got me though is the smell, especially in summer. A tatami starts, as you can see here, green. That's new tatami. But in the span of one year, usually it's one year or so, the tatami will become yellow. And it smells really good. And I really like it. Like grass getting dry. <laughs> That's how it smells to me. And something interesting is that even if at some point of my life I live in a house with tatami, I still feel like every time I enter somewhere, and I get that smell, it brings me very, very good feelings. Because the first times I smelled that was in my first trip to Japan when it was in a holiday, I was very happy to be experiencing so that. So it I like them. I it brings it brings me joy. And one last topic, but not least, would be what you're seeing in this image, futons. I guess futon means just bed, like this type of bed, but then you have kake futon. Kake futon, which is like the cover, like the duvet on top of the bed. And futon would be the lower side, right? But anyway, when I say futon, I refer to the whole bedding situation. I have slept in futon. When I, the first time you sleep in futon is like a bit fun, I guess, because like a different experience, but it is harder than a regular, like Western style mattress with like the, you know, the coral thing is inside. In that case, it felt harder. But not uncomfortable, I thought, that because it was harder, it would hurt my back and so on. But the worst part of it is that when you get up, you have to get up from the floor. <laughs> just reading the comment. I would just roll all over until I get to the bathroom. You know, it's not such a bad idea. Okay, let me check the comments. I got into sleeping on the floor in recent years. I started by placing my regular mattress on the floor and it worked great. Oh, well, that's cool. I mean, some people really love who don't. It's fine. I actually like them. And yeah, that's how it's just, yeah, my comfort. But yes, the pain, the pain of getting up was huge. You get used, it, used to it though. Yeah. The other thing is that with who don't, one thing good is that you can put it out during the day and you recover the space. But when you have a bed that has space under it, you always have that storage. And yeah, you cannot put it away, but you get storage that's statically there and you have to touch it. But I think my main thing was with the stepping on it. Like I cannot see people stepping on food arms and be okay. Even if I know that technically their feet, it doesn't have to be cleaner than their hands. If it was on shoes when they were walking and you know, I don't know, things, issues I have, things like that. And that's it. And remembering that I'm bad at, bad at saying goodbyes. So without further ado, thank you very much for being here today and see you in the next one. <laughs>